I want to start off with an article that was written for Rolling Stone by Jeff Goodell. Um, and he wrote about the nuclear reactors in the United States. And it turns out that we have 31 nuclear reactors in the U.S. that are in the exact same condition as the Fukushima nuclear reactor. Oh, lovely. Okay, then uh, I'm sure we'll be in great shape. This is such a disastrous story, and it's something that's definitely underreported. I haven't read about this anywhere else. And basically, it turns out that many of the nuclear reactors that were built in the United States in like the 1960s were built to last about 40 years, 20 to 40 years, believe it or not. And what's happening is um, not only are they still operating today when they're not supposed to be operating, we are making them operate even more than before. Like they're working harder than they're supposed to. Okay, and as a result, uh, there will be disastrous consequences. Or they could certainly be. Uh, there's a reactor near New York City that if uh, any uh, issues came up with it, and based on what we learned on what the radius of the evacuation should be in Fukushima, uh, we'd have to evacuate, I believe, 17 million people and nearly 10% of the U.S. population. I'm sure that we have plans underway for that. Yeah. Who believes we can evacuate 17 million people? No one. Right. That's part of the reason. So you've got to understand, that's part of the reason that they want to tell you that everything's just dandy, right? Because they know they can't evacuate. Just read a story in the New York Times earlier this week where uh, the Japanese uh, didn't want to say that the radiation had spread further than it had, and they didn't want to admit that the uh, reactors had melted down because they thought they couldn't evacuate more than 80,000 people. They'd evacuated 80,000. They're like, we can't do any more than that, so let's lie to them. Here, let me give you exact uh, details. Uh, here's from the New York Times. The meltdown at three of the Fukushima Daiichi 6 reactors had happened and that the government knew about it the day after the tsunami. When did they tell the uh, Japanese people? Three months later. Oh, my God. Okay, what were the consequences of that? Uh, well, one of the consequences of that was that about 45% of the 1,080 children in three Fukushima communities surveyed in late March tested positive for thyroid exposure to radiation. 45%. Well, come on, it's kind of a pain in the ass to evacuate all those people. By the way, uh, the thyroid is exactly where uh, kids got sick eventually and got cancer uh, after Chernobyl. Okay? So when they tell you, and I tell you, when, I, when it happened, I remember being on MSNBC and saying, look, if you're in that area, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not, but don't believe the government. Get out of there. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I remember people saying, oh, well, you can't say that, you know, the government officially saying. I don't give a damn what the government is officially saying. I don't know if you know this, but governments lie all the time. If you've got three, six reactors that are in trouble, and it looked like they were melting down, the government wouldn't officially say it, but there are so many different signs that they were melting down. Here's what you do. You evacuate. You get the hell out of there, okay? So, but don't worry. I'm sure the reactors here in the U.S. are perfectly safe including the one what, where the tower collapsed? Yeah, there's a one in the United States right now that had a cooling tower that collapsed. Uh -huh. And there's another one um, that is re repeatedly leaking radioactive fluid. Oh, that's fantastic. So th that's the thing, though. These reactors were not supposed to be operating as long as they have been. So, and here's the thing. We have a whole regulatory commission that's supposed to keep an eye on this. It's oh, new. well, then we're probably safe. All right, except, except no, of course we're not. Everything in this country is deregulated. It's amazing because when push comes to shove, all you need is a little bit of funds, and the commission that's supposed to regulate doesn't do its job because they're getting paid. Now, the nucle Nuclear uh, Regulatory Committee... Uh, is supposed to keep an eye on all these nuclear reactors, but what's happening is the people that are in the nuclear business are either paying them off or their friends, like w what happens is, let's say you uh, are from the uh, NRC and you decide, I don't want to work for the NRC anymore, I want to work in the nuclear business. Ooh, you can, I guess, can I guess where they go to work? <laughs> I'm going to guess it's not McDonald's that they wind up getting a really nice paycheck from the guys that they were regulating a month ago. That's exactly what happens. And even in cases where the NRC, in cases in the past where the NRC wants to regulate this industry and wants to make sure that, that they're doing the right thing, what happens is, you know, nuclear, uh, the nuclear business pays off people in Congress. So what happens is people in Congress will then go to the NRC and say, hey, stop doing your job. Yeah, cool it, okay? Those plants are fine. They're just fine. You're being overzealous. And by the way, you think you get those high-paying jobs if you go around busting up the nuclear industry? 
if you're a pain in their ass and you say, hey, you know what, uh, you got to pay these fines and you can't operate these plants anymore, I don't think you get the job that way. And I can't tell you the number of people in Washington that I have met or talked to, uh, and they, it's so common that they don't even know they're supposed to hide it. We'll tell you, well, obviously I got to take care of my family, so, you know, after the government, obviously I'm going to work for the people that I'm supposed to be keeping a check on. And now in this case, it's nuclear energy. In other cases, it's everything. It could be oil industry. It could be the food industry, et cetera. They all plan to work for that industry right after they get out of government. So, of course, they play ball so they can feed their family, right? But it's one thing to mess around, and it's disastrous enough in other fields where we have the explosion in the Gulf we did with oil, and, you know, we got the mad cow disease when it comes to food, et cetera. But you mess around with nuclear reactors, and then you try to figure out how to evacuate 17 million people, and it is a disaster we cannot recover from. That is something we, for the love of God, we've got to regulate just a little better. But our system, Anna, is so fundamentally broken I know. that we can't do anything right, no matter how serious, no matter how grave the consequences are. Hey, uh, the tower fell. Who cares? Those guys are going to hire me next week. Yeah, the tower's fine. Who says it fell? It's fine. It's leaking radiation. Radiation never hurt anybody. As with any corporation, they're focused on their bottom line. These repairs cost hundreds of millions of dollars that they are not willing to pay, even though they have the money to pay. They don't want to do that. They rather, you know, keep their profits and not have to pay for any of this. But as with anything in our system right now, money talks. And as you always say, we have to limit the influence of money. Right? And unless we don't do that, we're going to have more and more nuclear reactors in the United States that can you know, have a severe meltdown as long as we have something as small as a power outage. Look, there, okay, final thing on this. If you don't take the money out of government, and it, it has to, they have to buy the politicians, they have to buy the regulators, because who's going to pay $100 million to fix something? You think that they're voluntarily, they'd get fired immediately. If what was the CEO of one of these companies said, hey, you know what, it's a little safer if we repair this valve or whatever it is, or this tower, but it's going to cost us $128 million, so the executives will have to take less money, the shareholders will have to take less money, so let's go ahead and do that. They'd be like, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Gone. Okay. Gone. End of this. Okay. He's fired tomorrow. The new guy comes in and goes, that valve is fine and that tower is fine. Let's move forward. Unbelievable. Okay. That's reality. It's, it's, they're legally dictated to do that. They must do that. And so when you mess around with nuclear power with something like that, you're asking for a disaster of epic proportions.